Here are the notes for Unit 5.2, Right Hand Rules. So in this section, we're going to look at moving charges in magnetic fields and the forces that they experience. There's actually three different scenarios we're going to look at related to that. But before we do, we want to make sure that we understand how to represent three-dimensional situations on two-dimensional paper. Um, just a reminder that uh, the dot means out of the page and the X means into the page. And sometimes the dots and the X's look a little different depending on which textbook or website you're looking at, but dot out of the page, X into the page. Um, also just a reminder that hopefully somewhere along the way in a math class, you saw the three-dimensional coordinate system. And I'd like you to imagine for a moment that you're looking at a piece of paper So there's your paper and um, you're sitting at your desk. Here's your eye. You're looking down at the paper or maybe at your iPad. Okay. Okay. So you're sitting, you're, you're bending down, looking over the paper. And um, just a reminder that Z if you looked at it that way, Z would be up out of the page. X would be to the right, like we normally see it. And Y would be um, straight up. So when I represent that, um, like when I'm looking at my iPad right now, oh, I wish I had some more space. I'm going to add a page here. Okay, so... If I, um, this is me right here. Here's me and my hairdo, okay? I'm looking over the page. I see Z coming out at me. So on the page, what does the page look like? Here's the page, or it could be an iPad or something. Uh, we would have Y appears to be up and down in the plane of the page. X is left and right in the plane of the page. And then the Z axis we could represent with a dot, which means that it's coming out of the page at me. Okay, so I've, I've, I've rotated this. Here I am holding the page. Um, I'm looking at it like that from the side view. It looks like that. Okay. Um, next little reminder here is about conventional current. Remember that conventional current is the flow of positive charges. And if the conventional current is to the left, then actually what's happening is the electrons are moving to the right. So conventional current is always opposite the actual charge flow. Okay. Okay. Now that we've got that out of the way, we are ready to look at our first right-hand rule. And before we do, um, or as we do, we're going to look at a simulation from the physics aviary. So I'm going to start with conventional current, moving to the right. And I want you to notice um, these circles that represent the magnetic field, a three-dimensional magnetic field around the wire. When I change the direction of the current, look at what happens to the circles. They change direction. So what I'm going to do is take a screenshot of this. And then um, and uh, take a look at it here. So what I like to do in real life is I like to hold a pen or a pencil when I think about this. So here's the eraser of my pencil that I'm going to hold. And here's the silver part. And then... Here's the yellow part of the pencil. And here's the point of the pencil. And the important thing here is that when I hold the pencil, the point of the pencil is going in the same direction as the conventional current. Then what I do is I wrap my hand around the pencil so that my thumb is pointing in the same direction as the current. So my thumb kind of goes like this. And then my fingers would come up and over like this. And 
and like that, okay? So, let's see. Well, I'll have a green hand here. Okay, so if you can imagine that, you can imagine my, um, my fingers coming up and over, that's what this is trying to show, that the magnetic field is coming up and over the top, and then behind the wire, it's going up. If I were going to indicate directions using the conventions that we just learned, the magnetic field would be coming out of the page above the wire, and it would be going into the page below the wire. So that is, um, that is that. So let me go back to the simulation. Oh, okay, here we are back in the simulation. Um, let's see. I can change the simulation to 2D, and it shows those dots and X's like I just showed. And you can see that as we get farther away from the wire, there are fewer dots and X's. That indicates that the magnetic field is weaker. Um, we can click the button to see what the field strength is at points. Oops. Let me go back to 3D. There we go. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do next is increase the current, and let's see what happens to the field. So as the current goes up, the charges move faster, and the field gets stronger. If I change the direction of the field, then, um, then the, um, the magnetic field goes in the opposite direction. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to where I began here, direction of the conventional current to the right, and I'll take the current back down a little bit. Oops, or will I? Okay, I guess that's close enough. Now I'm gonna change this to electron flow. So the conventional current, remember, is positive charge flow. Um, and now I've changed it to electron flow. Now, electron flow, in order to have the same magnetic field as what we had, Ooh, where did my marker go? Oh no, I lost my markup. Okay, well, let me go back to conventional current. So here I am in conventional current. Um, the charges are moving to the right, and the uh, the magnetic field is coming over the top. So I'll put this. I'll go ahead and put this in my notability. So I don't lose it. Okay, so the the um, magnetic field has would be coming out of the page above the wire and going into the page below the wire. Okay, so now what we want to do is look at what happens when we're working with... I'll say, oh, I didn't save it the last time. That was my problem. Um, so now what we want to see what would happen if we're working with electron flow. So if I'm working with electron flow... The direction of the magnetic field changed, but if I if I change this to go be going to the left, now this situation is equivalent to the situation that I had um, that I took a screenshot of previously. So let me see if I can put this into notability. Okay. And this should be at the very end. There's one. There's the other one. Okay, I'm going to bring this up to the other. Alrighty. So here we've got... Um, conventional current going to the right. And if I were to draw um, my right hand rule, I'd have my thumb in the direction of the current. 
And then, uh, and again, I think about this like holding a pencil. My fingers then wrap around okay so there's my hand my fingers wrap around and what's happening is that the magnetic field is coming over the top so there's a it's coming out of the page above the wire and below the page I'm sorry into the page below the wire okay now with electron flow what happens is I use my left hand so um, if I took my left hand and put it around the pencil and put my thumb in the direction of charge flow, we're just going to have a mirror image of what happened before. And my, <laughs> well, okay, I've drawn better hands in my day, but this will have to do for now. My apologies. So there's the hand. And um, we're saying that, oopsie. We're saying that the electrons are going to the left and the we have the same magnetic field, dot above, x below. And really, this is two representations of the same scenario. On the left, we have the United States way of doing it because we're working with conventional current, which is positive charge flow. And in uh, Canada and Europe and lots and lots of other places, we have... Um, electron flow and we use the left hand but we get the same answer for the direction of the magnetic field so it's two ways to do the right thing now uh, two ways to, to solve the problem um, many students get a little frustrated with me at this point they're like well, this is confusing Ultimately, it's kind of nice because notice for the left hand, we're going to use the left hand is we're going to use to um, represent negative charge flow, and the right hand we can use to represent positive charge flow. And ultimately, we end up with um, a tool or a system for any situation. So it turns out to be good to be international and domestic and know how to do it in, um, in both places. Okay, so how is this summarized? Let me go back up to the top here. Um, so here's the right hand rule for a current carrying wire. We can use the right hand rule to predict the orientation of a magnetic field around the wire. Here's the same thing represented just going up and down. In this scenario, on the left side here at this point, this would be coming out of the page, so I'd put a dot. On the right side, that magnetic field is going into the page, so I'd put an X. And here's a picture of the um, Here's a picture of the right hand rule. Um, again, the thumb, oops, the thumb is, is in the direction of um, the charge flow. And the fingers tell us the magnetic field. Ooh, I forgot to tell you in the last thing, B is the symbol for the magnetic field. B, the B field. So that's, we see that there. Um, so uh, we, we use right-hand rules a lot when we work with three-dimensional systems because it's, it's hard to just remember it without some kind of orientation, some kind of um, convention or some kind of trick for remembering. So that's really what this is all about. It's it's to figure out the relationship again between the current and the magnetic field around this current carrying wire. Okay, let's look at the second right hand rule. The second right hand rule is for the force on a charged particle in a magnetic field. This rule also this rule is called the motor principle. Because it also works for wires. And I'll do an example like that in just a moment. Um, so, um, when a charge is placed in a magnetic field, the charge experiences a magnetic force when two conditions exist. When the charge is moving relative to the magnetic field, 
and when the charge is velocity has a component perpendicular to the direction of that magnetic field. Now there's three things we're trying to keep track of here. We're keeping track of the magnetic force, the velocity of the particle, the direction of the velocity of the particle, and the direction of the magnetic field. And all three of those things are perpendicular to each other. All of those things are perpendicular to each other. Um, so here, this is a picture um, of the magnetic field going into the paper. These are pluses, but they should be Xs. Again, you'll see different publishers kind of take liberties with that. We've got the force going up, and we've got the motion of the particle going to the right. And it's a positive particle, so I'm going to use my uh, right hand. So what I would do here, and I invite you to try to do this along with me, is I'm, I'm holding out my hand. You can't see me doing it, but I'm... Um, pointing my fingers into the page. I'll, I'll attempt to draw this. Okay, I'm pointing my fingers into the page. My thumb is going to the right. Um, oh, my thumb is kind of wacky. We'll shorten the thumb just a little bit there. So there's V. Um, there's my B field that's supposed to be going into the page, okay? And then my palm gives me the force, which, on, which would be up in this scenario. Again, we have three perpendicular vectors and we're trying to keep track of their orientation to each other. Uh, let's look at a, a simulation for that. Here is a magnetic field pointing into the page. You can see the X's. And I'm going to fire a negative charge, so the charge is negative, um, and see what happens. All right, I'll do it again. One more time. Okay, so I'm going to take a screenshot of that and talk a little bit about it. So the charge initially was moving like that, and it's a negative charge, okay? And that means I'm gonna use my left hand, and opposite of what we just saw, the force in this case is going to be down. Now, what's crazy is we saw it move in this semicircular path. So let's think about this for a minute. When the charge gets to this point, the velocity is tangent to the circle. And look at which way your palm point points. It always points toward the center of the circle. Um, so it, it causes circular motion. This causes circular motion. And we will quantify that in a future um, uh, section. Okay, but back to here. Um, again, that was just an example. Uh, you may have heard of particle accelerators. That's your introduction to particle accelerators. Okay, that was right-hand rule number two for the force on a charged particle in the magnetic field. We've got one more. The third one is the right-hand rule for finding the north end of an electromagnet. In this scenario, our thumb represents north, and the fingers represent conventional current. So an electromagnet is just an iron core wrapped with wire with current blowing in it. And what happens is we can magnetize the iron core this way. So uh, here I've got a pretty decent picture of the way that the wire is wrapped and the way that the um, current is flowing. And I would orient my fingers in that same direction and then my thumb tells me where the north end of the electromagnet is. So that's the third right-hand rule. 
Of course, if I were working with um, negative charge flow, then I would use my left hand. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples. Why don't you follow along with me and see if you can answer these based on what I have um, shown you. So the first one is label the north pole of each electromagnet. Okay, so uh, the convention is that red is the positive terminal. So our current is going to be going this way. And I'd follow the current. Okay. So what I like to do at this point is think about if I had a pencil, I would hold the pencil in my hand and wrap my fingers in the same direction. And when I do that, my fingers point that way before they wrap around my thumb points in the direction of the north end of the electromagnet. So this would be the north end of the electromagnet. Let's try another one. Again, I'm going to use the conventional current, positive charge flow coming out of the positive terminal of the batteries. And let's see, I can see that current coming around like this. And once again, I like to take a pencil and I hold my hand up next to the, um, next to this thing. Oh, I'll take a picture with my iPhone and paste it in here later. Um, anyway, once again, the thumb points to the north end of the uh, electromagnet. Okay, let's try this one. Draw the magnetic field around the current carrying wire. If I represents conventional current, which way are the electrons actually moving? Okay, so we, we're, we're saying that positive charge flow is to the right. So what's actually happening is electrons are moving to the left. Again, I like to take a pencil or a pen and wrap my hand around it and um, point my thumb in the direction of the current. And when I do that, I have my fingers coming over the top like that. And then behind, there it's going up behind and um, down in front. So if I were doing it with dots and X's, I would say it's coming out of the page above the wire and going into the page below the wire. Um, let me show you what's incorrect just for kicks. So this would be incorrect. That's not right, just to, to double check. Okay, let's try number three. So we've got the same scenario as up above. So I'm gonna draw my, um, well, I'm gonna do a better job, magnetic fields. And this is going into the page, out of the page, into the page, out of the page now. If you can imagine what's happening right here. What's happening right here is we have a magnetic field oriented going into the page, and then we have a magnetic field oriented coming out of the page. So the magnetic fields are in opposite directions. And what that's going to signify is attraction. Because if we had two bar magnets, oops, try that again. All right, today's not my day. Come on, notability, help me out here. There we go. 
if I had two barn magnets, a north and a south, and then another one that was a south and a north, you know that those two bar magnets would attract. And think about what the fields would look like In between them, they would be going in opposite directions. So that convention represents attraction. So um, these two wires would be experiencing magnetic forces. I'll call this wire one and I'll call this wire two. This would be the magnetic force of two on one, and this would be the magnetic force of one on two. All right, last example. Here we go. Um, this is intended to be somewhat three-dimensional. We've got the conventional current. This is the second right-hand rule. And uh, my thumb goes in the direction of the conventional current. Um, I need to draw the magnetic field. Remember that the magnetic field goes out of the north and into the south. So it's going like that. And then my palm is going to tell me the direction of the force. So when I, um, when I draw this, I'm taking my hand. Oh boy, yikes. I can do better. Give me a second here. Goodness gracious. Okay. Um, so I'm pointing. This isn't a whole lot better. But okay, I'm pointing my thumb in the direction of the current. And this is my right hand. My fingers. are going in the direction of the B field, magnetic field. And then my palm, and I encourage you to actually take your palm and try this, my palm is telling me the direction of the force. So the direction of the force on this wire would be down. All right, um, we will discuss this more in class. Lots of uh, three-dimensional